And I will turn this over to Harjeet and she can uh, provide us with a brief overview uh, with the protocol for our electronic meeting and call uh, and do roll call. Harjeet. Thank you, Chair Gross. This meeting is being live streamed. In order to ensure that the meeting remains accessible to the public, the meeting will be recessed for 15 minutes in the event that the live stream is interrupted or fails. Staff will work to get the live stream up and running as soon as possible, and we will keep Council informed. I will now proceed with roll call. Councillor Carlson. Councillor Groves is present. Chair Yanika. Councillor Innes. Present. Thank you. Councillor McFadden. See you on the board, Councillor McFadden? Yes, I'm, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, good. Yes, we can Thank hear you. you. Thank you. Councillor Raz is absent due to a personal matter. Councillor Sato is also absent. Councillor Santos is absent due to other municipal business. Councillor Sinclair. Okay, and I'm just going to circle back. Councillor Carlson. Regional Chair Yanika. I do see the chair in the meeting. I just can't hear him and we do require five members for quorum. Okay, we'll just do a check on our end to see if he's having any technical issues. Thank you. We can just have a few moments. Councillor Carlson is just having some challenges getting into the meeting as well. Chair Unica, we see you now. Are you able to unmute? Yeah, can you hear me as well? Perfect. Thank you so much. Perfect. Thank you. Chair Groves, we do have quorum, so you can proceed. Great. Thanks very much, Parjeet. Approval of the agenda. Councillor Sinclair. Moved by Councillor Sinclair. Councillor Groves, uh, we do have an item to add to the agenda. Uh, is that Councillor Sinclair's motion? Correct. Okay, so we'll add Councillor Sinclair's motion, I guess, under other business? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And uh, we'll have approval of the agenda by Councillor Sinclair adding that motion under other business. Um, the, uh, we have no delegation. And we've got three reports, four reports. Uh, first report is item 5.1, the 2020 Regional Fire Coordinators Program Summary. It is here for information, moved by uh, Chair Ainika. Are there any questions on that? I see no one on the board. And that is carried. Item 5.2, it's an overview of regional emergency management 2021 program activities moved by Councillor McFadden. Any questions? I see any on the board. That is carried. Item 5.3, the status update on the 2021 Office of the Fire Marshal and Emergency Management Compliance Requirements. It's also here for information. Moved by Councillor Innes. Any questions? I see none. That is carried. Item 5.4, our 911 annual update 2020. It is also here for information. Moved by Councillor Carlson. I don't see anyone on the board, so that is carried. We have one item of communication, item 6.1. Tipu Kawaja, Assistant Deputy Minister and Chief Emergency Management, Ministry of the Solicitor General, a letter dated April 7th, 2021, regarding emergency management and civil 
Protection Act 2020 compliance result, moved by uh, Councillor Sinclair. It's carried under item number seven, other business. Councillor Sinclair, you've got a motion. Yes, thank you. I, I don't know if this has been circulated to members of the committee or not. Confirming that it was circulated. Councilor Sinclair, we, we can't hear you. Yes, it was. But, uh, but I want to just Councillor Sinclair, we're just having some difficulty hearing you. No. If you yes, if you turn off your video, that would help. Thank you. How about now? Yes, wow. we can hear you. Oh, okay. That's what I wanted to try and accomplish with this motion is uh, to initiate some discussion about uh, epidemic preparation and, and uh, response capabilities at Peel and uh, there's been at all levels federal provincial and of course here at Peel a lot of seeking out and trying to sort out how to uh, respond to an epidemic in this case a worldwide pandemic and I think the the frequency of epidemics worldwide seems to be increasing, so we shouldn't expect this one to just go away and not be replaced by some other virus in the future. And uh, completely different skill sets are required than the standard uh, emergent response of resulting from physical threats like a flood or an explosion and, and perhaps an aircraft crash of where you can actually call police and put a perimeter around the site and uh, put barricades up and call fire marshals and so on. It's a far broader, more difficult uh, set of circumstances to deal with. And we've certainly been caught out without enough personal pr pr protective equipment. And we should probably be discussing how to deal with that in future and uh, the whole issue of accessing and communicating with uh, federal and provincial governments for uh, vaccines. So quite a broad range of uh, discussion has to happen to have a uh, perhaps a, a separate emergency plan or an annex to the existing uh, emergency plan of how to deal with this. And it's a very modest uh, operating uh, clause that and we're directing staff to begin uh, working jointly to draft a table of contents for what might be an epidemic emergency preparedness and response plan. No dates, just start penciling up what might be an annex to our emergency plan. So that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor Sinclair. I, I don't think we, do we need a seconder, Madam Clerk? Um, we do not need a seconder, but CEO Janice Baker would like to speak to the motion. Okay. Uh, thank you, and through you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councillor Sinclair. So uh, very clearly, all of the issues that you have outlined are very much top of mind for uh, for us. There are a number of things that are happening. Uh, I actually think we're we're probably doing the work that you're you're um, requesting. Um, but I also want to put it in the context of the framework of emergency planning. So, uh, and we have I have doc both Dr. Uh, who has um, uh, been able to join us, and, and Andrew as well. So I think Andrew uh, reached out to you and clarified that uh, in the context of our emergency plan, our plan is an all-hazards plan. And, and I think what's been learned about emergency planning uh, over many decades is, you know, 90% of all emergency plans um, are, uh, are consistent because emergency planning... Um, uh, 
you know, is about, it's about communication, it's about coordination, it's about ensuring resources are available to deal with whatever the emergency is. Uh, and then when you get into the substance of the emergency, whether it's flooding or a pandemic, you know, there are then the, the, the follow-on specific actions that you take uh, in the context of, of the specific issues that you're dealing with. Um, and so I think, um, you know, what we are doing, uh, first of all, is we, we are in the process of looking at the response to the pandemic, both by the region, by the province and others, and doing a lessons learned, uh, looking at some of the challenges that we have had and uh, how do we prepare better for those going forward. Um, and I do, I also think that, um, you know, we have been following really for the last 600 days, uh, the region's emergency plan. That is the framework under which we have operated. Uh, so uh, while I wasn't here uh, on day one, I know that the team of the day, um, you know, we came together in that emergency response uh, framework and uh, dealt with all of the issues that you have talked about. Uh, Dr. Lowe, I know, is going to tell you that, uh, you know, public health was uh, on deck and ready in January of 2020, even before the provincial emergency was declared. So um, I, I, I think the, um, the substance of what you're asking is, is well underway. Uh, what I would what I would say to you is, it, you know, nobody does uh, individual emergency plans anymore for specific types of emergencies. It's, it's really, um, uh, you know, emergency planning has evolved, and Andrew can speak to that. Uh, and I think that, uh, you know, we will do the things that you are asking for. In fact, uh, you know, many of them are works in process. But the framework of emergency planning would not put us in a position for us to create a separate uh, pandemic plan. So uh, maybe I'll just ask uh, Andrew to speak to that piece first, and then I'm going to ask Dr. Lowe if he can talk a bit of, from his perspective of uh, how we've responded to the emergency, what we've learned, and certainly uh, you know how we would uh, adapt to that going forward. So maybe, Andrew, I can turn it over to you for a couple of minutes. Thank, Thank you, Daniel. Sorry. And, and, and through, the, through the chair, uh, my apologies. I, I get people before council so infrequently, I forget the protocols. My apologies, chair. Um, thank you very much for this. Um, the As, as uh, Janice had mentioned, the all hazards plan, um, it's, it's designed so that it'll fit most, if not all, situations. Um, there are little nuances that will come out with each and every plan or with every response. If we look at this particular one, uh, Councillor uh, Sinclair, you flagged the uh, the PPE and the logistics, the supply chain as being uh, an issue. That was something that, um, that, that, that like, unlike, you know, or, or like, um, an explosion or something like that, we would find a little nuance, a little wrinkle in those events. Th that was a particular issue that we did have to contend with. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do with our plans is, as Janice mentioned, um, step away from those hazard specific sub plans, but then there's also a way that you can look at the plans from a consequence uh, perspective. So don't think of, if you, if you will, uh, just indulge me for a few minutes here. Um, don't think of the plans as, uh, needing to be specific to a fire, a flood, and that sort of thing. If you look at the common consequences throughout those events, an evacuation per se, we're better off writing an evacuation plan that is applicable to multiple situations. Uh, if we take that approach and we apply it to pandemic lensing or a, a pandemic situation, uh, it will allow us to um, determine redeployments, not just for pandemics, but for other events, whether they be uh, labor disruptions, things, things of those nature. So. Uh, that's one of the things that we will uh, be looking at to do as we move forward with the plan. Um, and I think to, in addition to that, in 2022, our plan is to, or our intent is to come back to this committee in May with an updated region appeal emergency plan. That work has been paused um, for about the past 600 days as we've dealt with our COVID response. We are 
you know, factoring a number of the lessons learned and observations from the COVID response, as well as the vaccination clinics and the other events that we've dealt with, whether they be uh, evacuations of First Nations communities or Afghan resettlements, uh, we'll, tr we'll incorporate as many of the findings as we can into the, that um, plan to bring forward, and then we will start working uh, diligently on the, the appendices. Okay. Thank you very much. Or is there... Uh... Uh, if I could ask Dr. Lowe through you, Madam Chair, if he could uh, just say a few words. Okay, Dr. Lowe. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, thank you very much, uh, CEO Baker and Councillor Sinclair, for the opportunity to address. I think Andrew's really spoken to, uh, you know, the, the overall framework. I just, I'm just here to provide a, a bit of the public health perspective. Uh, you know, certainly public health uh, actually was uh, on high alert since uh, the end of December 2019, uh, with uh, the first reports of a novel pneumonia in China, uh, and we entered emergency response on January 26, 2020. Um, you know, certainly uh, the following two months, as we saw this virus spread uh, in other jurisdictions, uh, for example, in Iran and Italy uh, and Western Europe, uh, we actually continued to uh, engage in case management and contact tracing. Uh, and we also were, uh, and I actually, uh, you know, certainly am of the view uh, that uh, that actually forestalled the establishment of community transmission in Canada. Uh, really what, uh, and, I, and I've said this previously and don't necessarily want to prejudge uh, anything that I might say before a future commission, um, but uh, the reality is that it, it really was the um, uh, the challenged response in the United States uh, that ultimately pushed us over the threshold into community transmission uh, in mid-March, uh, where we did see a surge of COVID cases amongst returning travelers from that country. Um, and I think uh, what I do want to highlight here is that there will no doubt be a, a number of lessons learned out of this pandemic, uh, it, uh, but uh, the intrinsic nature of the virus itself, uh, this disease, uh, I would say is equivalent to almost a, a, essentially beyond a Category 5 hurricane. <laughs> in, 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 in essence, there are intrinsic factors to this disease that I think would have limited uh, any ability to fully anticipate or, uh, or plan uh, every uh, every single detail and, and you know, certainly necessitated a magnitude and, and challenges of the response that we've seen to date, uh, which has been the longest response uh, in our modern history uh, as, a, as a region and as a public health unit. So, uh, you know, I think I, I do want to sort of uh, highlight uh, certainly that there will be many lessons learned and we are already thinking about uh, work uh, to update uh, these uh, the existing extant plans that already exist in public health and health services uh, that were relied on uh, and the ones that uh, Andrew has alluded to at the regional level. Um, but I think that the, uh, the very nature of the emergency itself uh, also meant that there would be a, a very uh, different response uh, just by virtue of the intrinsic characteristics of this disease. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Dr. Lowe. Um, I don't see any other speakers to the motion, so that is moved by Councillor Sinclair. And I, I have any objections? Uh, there's none, so the motion is carried. Um, we have no in-camera items. The next meeting is scheduled for Thursday, May 5th, 2022, 9.30 a.m. A motion to adjourn by Councillor Carson. All those in favor, that is carried. We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great weekend as well.